Good morning, everybody. Lee Brower here, and welcome to this week's edition of Meaningful Monday. I am grateful to be here. I am glad to be here. Why is it that what so many people crave, it is so difficult to obtain? We look for it in all kinds of places, a nice home, a successful job or business, the perfect partner, the right car, the perfect vacation, the perfect weight, the perfect income. But when we attain all those things, happiness eludes us. We are looking for it in achievements, we're looking for it in pleasures, and we miss entirely the fact that happiness is actually born from the inside out. So many people talk about the pursuit of happiness. The pursuit of happiness to me is like a marathon whose finish line is just over the next hill. We never achieve it. Nathaniel Hawthorne said it best when he said, happiness is like a butterfly, which when pursued is always just beyond our grasp. In Viktor Frankl's great, incredible book, Man's Search for Meaning, he declared, happiness cannot be pursued, it must ensue, and it only does so as the unintended side effect of one's personal dedication to a cause greater than himself. So for the purposes of today's Meaningful Monday, I'm going to give you two. I'm going to give you two suggestions that if you'll take those, my prediction is that you'll be able to see happiness begin to ensue in your life. And I'm going to tell you a story of exactly how I experienced that recently. But first, the first clue is to be in gratitude, to be grateful. And being grateful means to be in gratitude. And when you're being gratitude, it's not, it's, 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 it's where you actually appreciate your circumstances that you're in now. You're able to find the blessings no matter what that circumstance is, rather than focusing on the lack of blessings. And, but to do that, that's hard. It's difficult work. And so you have to practice, just like you would practice anything else. You know, if I'm going to become a great piano player, I'm going to practice. If I'm going to be a great athlete in a, in a particular sport, I have to practice. If you're going to elevate gratitude in your life and let success ensue, then you have to practice. And for me, that means every morning when I wake up, writing in my journal, what am I grateful for today? Every night before I go to bed, what am I grateful for that happened to today? It takes practice to be able to stay in gratitude. The second thing is, it starts with a B, but it's a little different, and that is to bestow happiness and gratitude in others. And we do that by servicing, by look, serv serving others, by looking outside of ourselves, not just inside of ourselves. And to do it without any expectation, to be able to just be there, to be in gratitude, is to be in service. In fact, they both serve us so well because when we experience challenges, or we experience pain or loss. That is where gratitude is the most valuable. And the more we practice gratitude, the easier it becomes to be able to deal with that pain and the more benefits that we experience. We talk about benefits, let's talk about them. There are psychological benefits, social benefits, physical benefits, and most relevant spiritual benefits. What are those psychological benefits? Well, first of all, you're more alert. You see things around you to put your present situation. You enjoy greater optimism and happiness. What are the social benefits? You feel more generous, compassionate, and connected to others. Physical benefits? You have a stronger immune system. Your ability to cope with stress and pain increases. And then finally, the spiritual benefits. Being in gratitude blocks, and being in gratitude and bestowing gratitude blocks negative and toxic emotions and enhances positive ones. So when we're in gratitude and we bestow gratitude, you know what that is? When we are in gratitude and we bestow gratitude, it's our gift to God. I had an experience recently. We were at the First Descent's annual charity, charity ball, but it's there to honor young adults that have been living with cancer, and it's there to raise money to be able to support them. It's a cause that's so dear to us because of our personal involvement with it, with Nick who passed away and his creating Wacky Warriors that is a big part of that. And that evening was spectacular. There was so much emotion, so much gratitude. It felt so good. And uh, we went to bed with a smile and wrote down all the things we were grateful for. Got up the next morning, went right into my journal. What am I grateful for this day? And then I get to my empowering question. How can I set my mindset to be able to be, um, 
bestow gratitude, to bestow happiness to others. So my empowering question for that day was, what can I do today? Or, or can I, excuse me, can I be the answer to someone's prayer today? That was it. Just wouldn't let it go. Now we're driving back from Vail to Salt Lake City and we come to Grand Junction. Lori's looking in Yelp, trying to see where's a good place to eat. We pull off, there's two or three cars at a stop sign. And I see a man with a sign that says, need money for food. And so I thought, well, maybe this. So I get $5 out, roll down my window. He comes over. He says, thank you very much. I say, you're welcome. And he goes back, transaction almost. And, uh, but I felt good. I did the right thing. And as we pulled away, and she's given directions, we made a wrong turn, and we had to turn around a gas station and come back. And there on the corner across the street from the gas station were two other couples, or excuse me, two other people, a couple, a man and a woman. And they had one sign that said, we need money for gas. That was it. And then the nudge hit. You know, when you're in gratitude, you can feel things that you wouldn't feel otherwise. And the nudge just said, give them some money. So now I took out a 20, folded it over, handed it to Lori. Without any hesitation on her part, none whatsoever, she rolls down the window, sticks it out the window, and the guy comes running over and he grabs it, just takes it, it's folded, he takes it and he runs back with it. And as we're rolling up the window, I see him unfold it and he shows it to his female companion. And he says, now we got enough to buy gas. And they were excited. And as I'm driving off, I witnessed them rusting across the street, holding hands, running across the street to get the gas. Now, I have to tell you, something happened in that moment where I felt as much, or I'll tell you this, I felt more joy than I felt from the night before in the most amazing of circumstances. But that as aspect of being spontaneously in gratitude and bestowing happiness and gratitude on others brought me a great deal of happiness. It ensued. The happiness ensued. Imagine what it would be like to have wonder, thankfulness, and appreciation as our primary mindset, as our primary state of being. I hope you can use these two suggestions this week. Just relax, let it go. I'll talk to you next week. Have a wonderful, meaningful week.